Okay, um, it's the Tesla podcast, and I'm delighted to be joined by someone I don't know an awful lot about, but because I've not spoken to him personally, but everything I've heard, he's been incredible, and I'm I'm really looking forward to this to find out a little bit more because I think he's got an interesting story, or there's something interesting that I want to find out. Right. Um, please introduce yourself, mate, um, and tell us tell us what what your name is and what you do, and I think you've got a couple of businesses, so just explain a bit about them for. Sure, thanks Ryan. So my name is Theo, Theo Millward. Uh, so I'm from a place called Shrewsbury, so somewhere between Birmingham and Manchester. Yeah. Dangerously close to Wales, but yeah. not, not quite there yet. Uh, nice bit of the world though. Lovely. Sorry? Nice bit of the world though. Lovely bit of the world. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure we'll get into this in a bit, but yeah, I've sort of uh, lived in lots of different places in the UK, spent some time in London and stuff, and okay. travelled a fair bit, and uh, very happy where I am. It's that yeah. nice balance. Yeah, good. Uh, what 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 do you what are your two businesses, mate? What what's the core business or what? The... There's more than two. Is it? <laughs> uh, so probably yes. The thing probably most known for is uh, so purchased swim time back in 2016, I think, off the founders Barry Linda Price. Um, so that's um, one of the largest swim schools in the UK franchise business. Uh, then started a company called Franscape during the pandemic, which I'm sure we'll get onto, which is a, a B2B software SaaS. And then uh, I've got a business in the pet space called Dog First Aid that I co-own with one of the franchisees uh, called Danny Hickman. And then we also reached, recently uh, purchased the majority share in ICAP, which is the Institute of Children's Activity Providers. Wow. And then we also have a training business. Wow, I didn't know any of that. <laughs> yeah. I knew about swim time and fanscape, but I didn't know about the yeah, rest. Yeah, I've been quite busy. Wow. Busy. So lots to talk about. Yeah, there's a lot to cover there. <laughs> okay. Um, I think from, from my perspective, I think the first time I, I saw you in, in the franchising space, I knew about swim time, but it was Fanscape. But I kind of want to jump straight to, can I ask how old you are? 36. 36, right. I look. How old do you think I look? Because I don't look... Yeah, you, look about th- you look about that. I was going to say 35. So you, okay. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that. Um, I... I, 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 I I want to ask the awkward question, but well, it's in my head. It's okay. like, what, why? The, why the fuck did you buy swim tank? What? 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 What intrigued you about that? And at your age and like, like a what? How would that happen, mate? Well, that's a really good question. So <laughs> there's <laughs> without being awkward, there's certain stuff I can and can't say uh, for legal reasons. Uh, but I'll, I'll I'll go back the basic part of history, which will explain yeah. as far as I can explain. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, I was work well. I, I trained as a, an accountant uh, after uni. Right. Um, didn't qualify. Did eleven out of the thirteen exams, however much it was then. And that was during the 08 crash, yeah. financial crash. Um, and then I ended up working uh, for an organisation in, in the leisure space, uh, which was in the swimming space ah, for right. quite a while, and worked my way up that business. And that had a rather interesting exit uh, that I'm not really allowed to talk about. Okay. Which is really annoying because believe you me, I would love to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, I can't. No. Uh, all that I will say is when that all happened, my reputation wasn't in a great place. Um, and that was a really, really difficult period of my life. How old were you then, mate? I was 30. Okay. So a difficult age as well, but growing up has been a Yeah. Player. So, kind of from a kind of, I'm not saying it's a gender thing, but I think certainly as a male, like when you're, you know, in your twenties, you're kind of like, you haven't got a clue what you're doing. Exactly right, yeah. and you kind of, you just kind of get into where you are, and yeah. then to have a quite a big, yeah, big yeah. kind of reset was quite was quite challenging, yeah. um, and quite a humbling experience. But basically, when all that happened, um, there wasn't very many people I could really speak to, and one of the people I tried to contact was Barry Price, who owned Swim Time, just just to be able to air my side of the story. Had you done a bit of business with Barry prior to yeah. being an accountant? Exactly. Yeah, okay. No, not as an accountant. So when I he was a customer of the uh, swimming organisation. Ah, right, that okay. was the link. Ah, right, okay. And basically, yeah, rang him up. Was just like, look, just kind of just want to let you know, I, I'm what? not terrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and share your story. Yeah, share my story. And he was one of the few people that picked the phone and he was just like, you should buy my business. I believe in you. Oh, I love that. That's and that's that. literally what happened. And I remember where I was standing, and he remembers, I was standing in my parents' uh, like kitchen overlooking the kind of like valley. He was in an underground car park in Manchester city centre. We both remember where we had that phone call. And the rest was history. And I couldn't afford to buy it. So a mixture of friends, friends and family helped out, banks helped out, and did a really, really good deal with Barry where I could pay him over a period of time. Mate, that is a mass... I know what it takes to buy a company or sell a company... Like at thirty years old, on the back of some hard shit, or just just at thirty years old, is 
fucking good going, isn't it, mate? It is, I, yeah. I, I, in the scale of things. It, you know, it, it is, it is. And that, that whole period of time was, was horrendous because I was dealing with the fallout of the legal issue that I really wish I could talk to about, yeah, yeah, but I can't. Um, and building a business and also having to fund the purchase. So I basically couldn't pay myself really Anything. for a number of years yeah. because it was, yeah, it needed so much investment in it and we were paying yeah, it back yeah. and all the loans and all that kind of stuff. Did you, did you, did you know about franchising then or did you? No. No. I love that, mate. Love that about you, though. So completely new to it. Yeah, but you don't like. I don't think you need to be. You, you can you, as long as you've got the the mind and the thought process and the mindset about learning and intrigueness, you can grasp it quite quickly. I think so. I, I get in a bit of trouble with this to the franchise community, and I've said what I'm about to say openly to everyone in the franchise community. I think there's a danger that we we perceive franchising as being something fundamentally unique. And, and that requires some kind of completely different way of doing business. Yeah. Now, franchise is incredible and, it, uh, and, and sometimes I open my eyes to it and I think it's a phenomenal yeah, model. Yeah. But fundamentally, if I'm being really honest, mm-hmm. it's a means to an end. Like, it's no different to running... Like, the principles I apply or Rachel applies or my team apply to running a franchise is the same principles we apply to any business, which is about being ethical, doing the right thing, yeah. having a great culture, building a great team. Yeah, 100%. I don't think that's different with franchising as it would be for any other type of company. No, I think you're completely right. And one of my concerns is with the sector is we, we try and expect there to be some kind of unique narrative around it and I'm not sure that's healthy mate you know what right so I'm, I'm mate, I can't believe you said that right so I, I in my pitches I or whatever how you want to call recruiting a franchise or franchisee I try and go down that route and just say there's I'm not selling you a magic wand that franchising makes that's that what I'm selling you and what I'm talking to you about coming to business with me and being a partner is this works and I can show you how to do it but just because it's franchising doesn't mean it's amazing. Exactly. It, that, and that's how I sort of pretty much word by word say, because I think you're right. I think it's right. I think it's right. You've got to, when you're recruiting a franchisee, it's all about who they are, morals, my gut feeling around them. Can they do it? You know, willpower. Have they got enough empathy, sympathy, all them skills, them soft skills that I think you need to run a business. And then obviously there's other skills that you need specifically. I guess if you run a swim time franchise, I guess swimming might help you be able to swim. <laughs> Although it's not requirement actually. But with a franchise in recruitment, if you're not good on the phone, you're probably not going to like it. Hmm. So there's some other skills there that you need to be able to do, like write an email. But fundamentally, I think you're the, I, like, I like that. I like that you just said that. Okay, now I've got my answer out of the way. Um, you, you, you bought it for the right intentions and, and, and you're put in that position. I, I really admire you for that, mate. I, I, Thank really, you. I really admire you for that. Can I sweep back then? Go so, th- where were you brought up, mate? What were your mum and dad do? And arts, oh. sisters, brothers. Love it. So, I'm an only child, so that's the first thing. So, yeah. so there's all sorts of psychological things to d- tease out that <laughs> one, I'm sure. I don't think I've got chronic only child syndrome, but some, some of my, my peers might, might say otherwise. <laughs> I don't think I'm too bad. No. Um, so yeah, so <laughs> as you can tell from my thick, brummy accent, I was born in Birmingham. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, I was born in Birmingham, uh, went to school in Birmingham, probably to about the age of 10, and then I moved to, to Shrewsbury uh, and have been sort of there as my sort of core base ever, ever since. Both my parents are kind of entrepreneurial in nature, which is interesting. Yeah, I think. So uh, dad's had sort of number of businesses over the years and then went into sort of more sort of corporate kind of managerial CEO type roles yeah. and he still actually helps me out of the business even now and he's 81 yeah nice <laughs> he's uh, he's an incredible uh, force <laughs> but, inspiring dad yeah he's really inspiring he's he's uh, he's just a force of nature I mean he can't park a car I'll give him that I mean yeah. he's he sort of defines kind of uh, he's got his, he's got a very fixed mindset and certain stuff but at the end of the day, you can't knock experience. Yeah. And somebody who's been there, done it, got the T-shirt. Like his sense of gut of what's right or wrong, you know, commercially is yeah. pretty nailed on even now. Um, and then my mum has been... I think that's because the fundamentals, they'll never change though, do they? they all that. I agree. Yeah, but yeah. carry on. Sorry. No, 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 not at all. Not yeah, at all. Yeah. No, I absolutely agree with you. The fundamentals never change and then day, family's family, right? So it's, yeah. it's really special to be, able to, to be able to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, my mother, um, so she's been involved sort of in the general sort of property sphere. Um, I wouldn't say she's a sort of, uh, she hasn't really done that much development. So she's done more sort of, um, her big thing is sort of historic restorations. Okay. So where she's absolutely mega is taking um, typically listed buildings and to restore them sympathetically with a modern touch. Wow. And she is 
proper knockout at it. Um, she doesn't get enough credit for it. She doesn't sort of run it as a full board business, so it's it's a bit of a weird. It's a hybrid between kind of she fundamentally works just on her own with a, with a, with a team of kind of contracts and stuff. What and goes to someone's house and does it? No, it's mainly sort of been just through her own career. So mainly like houses, the family home type thing. Yeah. But then she's she's branched out on the side as well and done done in in that sphere, done various bits. But a lot of it, in fairness to her, she's had to fit around my upbringing and yeah. all that kind of stuff. So that's why I guess it's not been a kind of formal career in that sort of sense oh, nice. but yeah she's pretty mega love that mate so okay did you go to uni I did what did you do at uni bread business did you total waste of time did you <laughs> I'm not supposed to say that I don't use did, anything did you enjoy education then I, <clears throat> I always find people go to uni and enjoy education so did you enjoy school or uh, uh, so I, I yeah I had a bit of a rough time at school to be honest uh, pretty tough uh, yeah, I'm pretty short. Uh, probably can't, we probably can tell us a podcast. So I'm pretty short. Typical stuff, right? Never picked for the sports team, all that kind of yeah. sort of stuff. And I, I'm sure we'll cover sport later on. I've, I am really, really sporty, but in a, in a very different way, in okay. a way people perhaps don't necessarily uh, expect. Um, so yeah, I found school hard, like really, really hard. And would you say you were bullied at school, or would you just say you didn't like it? Yeah, I was. I was, I was, yeah, I was when did you? When did you? I don't want to turn this into a sob story because no, it's, no, not no, it's not about that. No. But it, what it is about is um, a, a man... A, I realised... It took me to my late 30s that I realised that I was sort of bullied at school. Interesting. That, like, it took me a while to think, actually, I was fucking given a hard time every day and fucking hate... I, like, mate, I hated school. Like, I wouldn't, I didn't, didn't like wow. it one bit. Wasn't interested in it. But it took me a long time to sort of realise, in hindsight, actually... I was made a living by about three lads all the way through my school life. That's <laughs> three more than I had. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I can kind of relate to that. So I, I never really had any... So I didn't have any friends is probably pushing it a bit. I, I would phrase it as I never had anybody who really, truly knew me until I got to university. Yeah. And I spent... up So up until 18, I basically had no friends. So yeah. you'd have acquaintances, people would talk to you. Yeah. But I felt extremely lonely. Yeah. Like, extremely lonely. And... and Again, it's not a sob story, but like to give examples, like it was the kind of thing like you'd sit down with your lunch and everyone would move tables to another table. Like it's it's pretty brutal. Um, I was never physically assaulted or anything of that nature, nothing like that. Um, but in terms of kind of rejection and kind of being, uh, Maybe, yeah, I, isolated. Right. So one of the things that f- comes through from you is you're fiercely independent. Yeah. So yeah. there's some build, building blocks there, mate. Like you're fiercely yeah. independent. Like you don't fear much. And that's really interesting because if you look at like, so I didn't identify as an entrepreneur until I was 32. Yeah. Um, and, and people who, who I said that to are just like, what on earth? Like, that just makes no sense. Of course you were. I wasn't. Yeah. And it's only then that you look back at decisions and things that you did in your life that kind of make sense. Yeah. But the one word to your point, uh, I would say is like one of my secret, super, well, one of my superpowers is resilience. Yeah. And what I've been through with school and other things in my personal life and the stuff that led me to be involved in swim time, I, I just don't get faced by anything. And what yeah. that means is in a lot of like commercial situations, like good luck, like yeah. I'm not being funny, like good luck applying pressure on me. Because yeah, yeah. I, I, I kind of, you know, it's a painful process to go through, but I've got such such a tough shell. Yeah, yeah. I'm just not bothered. Yeah, I think, I think when you've had to be grossly independent and then you like have a lot of internal dialogue, and, yeah, and that internal dialogue gets you through things that are absolutely massive, and being able to talk yourself through and talk yourself not having to depend on someone. Um, unfortunately, it is forced independence, which yes. is, can be sad. And then sometimes, like as a as a bunch of friends that I know, have just been um, throughout the girls have been on a big hen do, and they've been school friends, primary school, secondary school. They're all mums. They're all married. And just been on a massive holiday and do slight, have slight glimmers of like, fucking hell, I haven't got loads of mates like that. Um, but at the same difference, I kind of like the independence that I have and being able to self, self-maintain self and self-support myself and I feel like you're probably the same, is okay. that you, you, you've probably got some adult friends now, um, but the, the, the actual work you did when you were younger, unfortunately, has given you the, <laughs> but giving you the skills you use now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it was... Even now, so my, a really good friend of mine describes it as um, uh, an introvert extrovert. So even now, and, and I've never shared this with anybody, but 
um, like going going to social events even with work, like I'm internally terrified. Like really, yeah, I, I, this reaction I get right. So I don't for whatever reason I'm I'm quite good at networking. I yeah. seem to be able to talk bollocks to anybody. Yeah, but you're quite approachable in that respect, though. You, you can hold a conversation. Yeah. You're really polite, mate. We, Thank you. I mean, I, I, I do try. I try. You are. <laughs> Thank you. You drop, you drop a few f bombs with me, but you are polite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty caustic at times. Um, but I, I'm terrified beforehand. Genuinely, like I, I get anxious. Yeah. Um, and then when I get into it, I relax into it. And I, I've got there's people that I work with. I've got there's, there's a guy I work with. He's actually incredible. I, I know finds networking really really hard. You know, socially, so, so I can relate to it. I know it's not unique, but. Mm. People see this kind of facade, but yeah. deep down, I'm just like, this is just my worst nightmare because yeah. I was so used to being rejected. I was so used to not being invited to parties. I was so used to, if I was there, being like, what are you doing here? No one's speaking to me. That psychologically now, even 20 years on, that is what my brain thinks is going to happen. That's what yeah, my brain yeah, is preparing yeah. itself for. Yeah, just a habit you've had. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think it'll ever go. I d- yeah, I don't think it'll ever go either. I mean, unless you went and prepared for psychology. For I, don't, I, I, I literally don't know the answers to my... I, no. I, 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 I've, it's just interesting to hear that because I, 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 I think a lot of people get anxious about certain things, but I don't know what the triggers are, but I, I definitely feel like that. I hmm. get into panic stations as well. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, but you see, you rock it more than me. You look so fly when you turn up in all your gear it, and everything. No, no. <laughs> it, a lot... Uh, Kay, Kay knows, like, I, I, get, I get really anxious, like I'll do... I, I, I get to a point where I'm like crippled with anxiety, really? like like stomachs in knots, you know, can't do, flustered in a real bad situation. I was nearly being sick at the expo the first time I spoke publicly, but that's a different ball game altogether. So, mm. but I think everyone's the same, like not everyone. Some people do, and some people don't in them circumstances. But I think what the key is is being able to get over it and work your way through it. Yeah, and, and control then, it. Yeah, and then also acknowledging it. So mm. you'll be good at acknowledging it now is that you'll go through these things and go, no, this is why I do it. This is why I'm like that. Have a big deep breath, walk through the door and make it. And that's the bit of work that you need to concentrate on every time, mm. isn't it? Is trying to, well, I think so anyway, that's my... No, no, it makes a lot of sense. And I think a lot of it as well is allowing yourself to do it. So yeah. don't, I think for, for, for me, I know everyone's journey is personal, right? But for, for me, it's like don't, trying to almost resist the physical symptoms, whatever they might be. Yeah can be the worst thing you can do sometimes yeah. just allowing yourself to feel a certain way and accepting it yeah. as part of your process yeah, I yeah. find quite healthy yeah it's true that mate yeah. okay lost track a little bit now um, <laughs> university that's where we're at so right, uni, yeah. yeah so you hated school well didn't, didn't hate didn't enjoy school yeah um, so educate mate you, you're quite in, you, would you say you're quite intelligent would you say you're quite intelligent would you say you're quite intellectual would you say you're, you're, Going to, did you leave, do your A-levels and then went to uni, would you say? Yeah, you know, I've done the sort of typical, you know, got my two one in business and decent, yeah. reasonable results. Yeah. It's weird at school, because um, I went to a private school yeah. where um, it was very academic. Yeah. And I was, it's all like sets, in sets, the yeah, academic yeah, yeah. sets. I, was I never went to in... private school and then got, like, had to leave, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so why did you leave? Um... My um, my mum and dad's business lost a lot of money uh, at the time, and um, sure. they couldn't afford to keep me in. Um, so yeah, I moved out. Was that that must have been tough? Yeah, it was a bit of a mad. It was a, in reflection, I just feel sad for the situation. Um, yeah. But the, 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 the so I'll talk to you a little bit about my bullying. I went to the, the school, and I got particularly harassed by one lad and, and his mate. But this one particular lad, and he made my life fucking hell feel like I'm, I've always been quite overweight. And I got a lot of pain for that. Um, And then I left that school, went to another school, which is a good hour away. And it wasn't a private school, a lot rougher. Thought I was in, I thought buzzing. You know, I'm never going to see him again. Different sort of set, it's sound. Fucking hell, his best mate goes to that school, doesn't he? Oh, bud. I know. So then, so the next four years, just hell. Yeah, yeah. Um, just hell. And you're um, locked in, right? Aren't you? Yeah, yeah. You know you're locked in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, the same thing. Yeah, so just, just, just basically, man, I was just fat. Didn't really. I got bad dyslexia. Uh, wasn't interested. I'm gonna be dead straight with you. Is that I, I've just never been interested in education. I've always thought I was a little bit smarter than teachers. My ego there. But I've always thought this guy he hasn't got a fucking clue what he's talking about. But I've also had a real blessed is that mum and dad have been entrepreneurs their whole life. And my dad's been extremely fucking driven. 
come from a very, very, very poor background uh, and dra- and dragged himself, Leo, like, fucking dragged himself, mate. His mum and dad worked in the mills, lived in a fucking council house with, with the toilet in the back garden. And he's passed away, dad, last year, but dragged himself. Mm. And that spirit's like, in, like, if you knew my dad and you speak to my mum, like, it's me to the core. That's what mm. I'm like. There's just absolutely no way I'm going to fail at what I'm going to do. It doesn't matter. You can set fire to me and I'll, I'll be fine. Yeah. And, and that's what it, so... Yeah, school, being bullied, education, learning, I think I just wasn't interested. So I wasn't interested in learning. My learning now is always through conversation. Like I can't read very much. Dyslexia makes me switch off. I do read books now though, it's become a new habit and I force myself to do it. I have to do like a chapter at a time, a chapter and a half and I get bored, a bit like a TV series. I just watch a bit and go back to it sort of thing. But I've got about 12 books next to my bed and I just sort of dip in and out of them and take what I need out of them. But yeah, education was a bit of a, like it just wasn't, it wasn't my thing, mate. But just exploring that a little bit, like do you not think maybe an aspect of that is how we define intelligence and how we define kind of for, particularly for kids, right? How we define success. Yeah. Do you not think maybe that's a bit warped? Because, I mean, you're you're obviously intelligent yeah. because you wouldn't have achieved what you've achieved. Yeah. Maybe you don't fit in the kind of traditional mould of yeah. judging that, yeah, yeah. but that doesn't mean you're not intelligent. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Or maybe the academic's the right word then. Yeah. Maybe academic is... Because there's lots of definitions of intelligence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it just, you just never... I think, I think I, my own doing is, is just, you think, A-levels degree professional career because that's how we're, we're all conditioned to think yeah yeah it's very interesting yeah it is interesting when you start diving into stuff like that isn't it? we are quite, we are surprisingly similar I think yeah yeah <laughs> uh, well because Theo when, when, when I heard a few stories about you and just like how did it come about I just I just knew that I wanted to have a chat with you yeah yeah but I wanted to hold off as long as I could because I'd, I wanted to do this podcast this podcast has been on my agenda for a long time because yeah. just like yourself I think the franchise industry um, hasn't got a big enough voice, I don't think. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think it, I feel like there's some really m- amazing people I've met in in franchising, but kind of gets put in this box. And I just wanted to have some conversations with people. Yeah. I love social media; it's been a big part of my life. I'm really, really interested in social media. And as soon as I could put the tools together and came on, Kay came on board, I was like, "We're fucking doing a podcast." <laughs> and I just wanted to get some cool people on and have these sort of conversations because. It's, it's interesting. I've, I've totally gone off track here now for you. It's the best way to be. Yeah. <laughs> okay, mate. So we'll, you're in university, done your business degree. Did you, mate, what's, what's, your, what's your, your personal life at this point? You've got a bit, you're going out on the RAS, you've got a bird yet? Or <laughs> what, what's, 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 what's... Lads, lads, the, lads. Well, well, like, I don't right. know. <laughs> you never know, mate. You right. could have... T- okay. I don't know. So I went to an all-boys school. Okay. Right. I have no brothers, no brothers or sisters. Yeah. And I basically have not had any friends at the age of 18. Mm-hmm. So women, to me, is like an alien species. Yeah, they are an alien species, but yeah. They are an alien species. At this point, <laughs> I'm just like, boy, have I got some catch up to do. So I went, to, I went to uni. I was like, ah, oh, all right. Females. <laughs> Let's get involved. Um, so, yeah, I mean, again, I'm, I'm quite short and uh, probably profoundly irritating. And my weapon is basically all I've got going for me really is my chat. So... <laughs> Which is questionable, as, as uh, many who watch this will know. Um, yeah, no, do you know, what? I had I had a very good first year of uni. Uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do a huge amount of work. Um, oh dear. Yeah, no, that was good. Yeah, it was good fun. And and look, you know, you kind of you. That sounds really wanky, doesn't it? But you know, you're finding yourself, and you know, you you, you know, you get in with different crowds of people, and you think, yeah, that works for me, that doesn't, and you yeah. kind of. It's actually a really useful experience. So whilst whilst the academia was <laughs> when Lancaster's on here bit of a waste of time if yeah. I'm really honest um, the, the kind of the social growing particularly for me yeah. and actually as well I think it's really important so going to a private school you are surrounded by people of a certain background and yeah. that is what it is but yeah. my, my, for me <clears throat> there's more to the world than that and yeah. actually I really so Lancaster at the time I think had one of the lowest percentage of independent school students that were there right. and I think that's one of the best things that ever happened to me um, because it's a chance loads to... Loads of walks of life. Loads of walks of life and uh, get a chance to just be with different people that you wouldn't ordinarily meet because actually, yes, you know, some people are in the argument, well, if you stay in a certain track, then that's fine. I didn't want to succeed that way because to me that feels a bit cheap. Okay. Like, you know, I don't know. I'm, yeah. I, 
I think it's just very easy to kind of like, you know, daddy's friend gets you a job and all this kind of stuff or trust funds and all this and yeah. not that that's me. But like, yeah, I kind of wanted, I wanted to do it the real way because yeah. to me, that's more genuine. It's more genuine to start from the bottom. Uh, everyone's got their own journey feel. Like it, 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 if you want to do that, then that's cool. Where I, I always think you could just let people be whatever they be as long as they deliver it in the right way. Of course, and I'm not I'm not judging anyone that's done that, but like for me, yeah, yeah. that's I wanted, I wanted to prove to, to myself yeah, that yeah. I could do it from ground zero. Do you think that maybe come from your dad a little bit of? Evidence? I think so. Because like to your story about your parents, both my parents came from like nothing. Yeah. Like, mum too had a toilet at the back of the garden. No, yeah. no toilet in the house. So that's what I'm saying to you is is, is that maybe that that tickle from your dad has, has done done your head in your whole time, and you thought. I need to go and do it a little bit nicer. I want to do it. Well, yeah. and actually, for me, I feel very fulfilled. Yeah. Because I know we were talking before we start this. Like, I'm not particularly motivated by money. And I know we were saying, well, that's 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 a privileged thing to say. And, and it is. Yeah. There's no point even sugarcoating that. Yeah. You say that from a position of privilege. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, we are where we are. Yeah, yeah. And so now we're looking for different kinds of fulfillment. Yeah, and for yeah. me, it's it's just... I want to win. <laughs> I think, I think, I think, Theo, you, 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 you work as much as you possibly can to where you think financial success looks like. Mm-hmm. And then when you get there, you kind of realise, okay, it kind of, you, you get, you buy your house, you get a car, you go on holidays, do all the things and put a bit of money in the bank, do whatever, you, in, whatever else you like, I don't know what else you like, but I like tattoos. But um, you do all them things, but yeah, then... Yeah, right, I'm I, covered in them, mate. Yeah, I don't think you've got one. <laughs> <laughs> Which would be quite a cool podcast if you've got one. No. <laughs> but, um, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, I, think, I think you do talk from a privilege when you say that, but it, when I think you realise that money doesn't buy you all happiness, you can still be extremely sad, you can still be extremely stressed, you can still be overwhelmed with lots of well not even lots of money just some money and it doesn't doesn't make any difference to a certain degree but again you have to get there you have to go through a lot of pain to make some money to then <laughs> be able to say that <laughs> sentence yeah you kind of partly feels a bit of a dick you'd be like oh yeah it's really great isn't it you know that, but yeah we are where we are right yeah, you yeah. know that's kind of is what it is yeah, yeah. so yeah just jump about the personal thing so the thing the thing kind of we've not touched on in a lot of detail but the thread for me and what sort of got me through school and everything has been sport so um I don't know how this kind of came about, but initially I became, realised I was quite a recent, reasonable runner, particularly cross country. Um, so, so did that kind of through primary school a bit. And then one of the privileges of going to an independent school is that we had a, a rowing club there. Right. No experience of it ever before. Just fell in love with it. Like uh, originally started in singles, like literally on your own. <laughs> yeah. Read that or you, whatever you want. Yeah. And I found just the freedom and the tranquility of being out in the water and kind of the, it's quite rhythmical and I really, really love that. And I was, I was really good in the sort of first six months when I was at school. And then what happened was I stopped, I, my sort of height and sort of size difference really became acute and all the other kids were getting bigger than me. And I had a decision to make. Did I basically want to be a really shit rower because I was physically small? And it, to be blunt, it's a, it's a numbers game, right? It's, yeah. it's how big are your guns, essentially. Yeah. Right. Or did I want to stay in the sport um, and continue and that's when I moved into something called coxing uh, which is <laughs> about as great a euphemism as we're ever going to get um, <laughs> so basically what the cox does uh, is the cox's job is to run the strategy of the race and is steering the boat and is all about the site well you could do it to lots of different levels there's the kind of like the row 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 your boat kind of bs version and then there's the full bore kind of olympic track version which is all about psychology working under pressure tactic strategy teamwork and that's the way i went so i i did that through school uni and then after uni to a very very high level did you mate i didn't that's fucking cool that man oh uh, yeah represented england no way i love mate that is yeah. sick so just like give me an example of how that works and what do you do i'm not i mean i've got a clue no it's fine so and and this is this is the thread and i think this links to business this is what i absolutely love so you could have so i really enjoyed eights so there'd be eight guys and then me. Um, and when we say we're talking smallest guy will be 6162, yeah. you're talking probably 85, 90 kg. These yeah. are units, like yeah. proper units. So you've got eight guys that could have a range of like psychological makeups. Yeah. So you have my you have your full blow stereotypical like alpha guys, and you might have guys that have got other shit going on in their life. Yeah. So if, the way I describe a cox is it's like being on the accelerator pedal of a car. You can't just mash it 
because you'll spin the wheels up and everything will blow up, right? Yeah. So you've got to you've got to work that power band, but you've got to work it as a unit. You can't just work individuals. You've got to work the whole unit. So you're kind of like riding on this crest of the wave, whilst you've got fight typically when you're doing uh, mostly in racing five of the crews against you over two kilometers is Olympic distance and it's it's it, it's really 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 nuanced but for me there's been a handful of occasions which have been truly extraordinary where we have extracted a result that is beyond the capability of the people and like for me that's the definition of synergy right synergy being two and two equals five yeah so it's making more than the sum of the parts when you get it right and and it it's only happened a few times in my career it is the most or expiring experience because you're extracting things out of people that even they didn't think were possible under the most unbelievable pressure. Mate, I love that. And I, I, I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Love it. Mate, how, how do you even get... So, like, you were rowing and then someone said, do this role, and you were like, get it. Did you go... Did anyone coach you or...? Right. So you, you figure shit out, right? And you make mistakes. And what you, it's funny the things you remember. So, like, as a kid, because you're kind of like, when you start coxing... It's all about shouting. It's basically shouting because you see these other kids and they're just bawling at people. Yeah. That's just, that's like, like idiot version. Like yeah. any, any, any idiot can scream at somebody to like, row harder. You know, yeah, yeah. It's just easy, right? And I'll never forget it because I, because I was small and quite good. I got asked to sometimes sub in for the really top boys at school, which at school was crazy because you remember how like linear it would be. Yeah. So for me, so I was 14 to be coxing the 18 year olds. It, it's just it breaks all the, all the norms of school yeah, yeah. You, know, you imagine how weird that is yeah. and I remember I remember this guy who was kind of pretty brutal but I actually really thank him for it and we'd come up off the session and he just came up to me and he went Theo is this relaxing relax because that's I used to give that command like relax like this and he was like does that relax you he was like no and he was like just think. think about that and it's weird that you go back and so sometimes when you get better at it you're actually not shouting that much. You're actually trying to calm people down at certain parts of the race because you want them to get to a rhythm and to get their breathing right and all that. It's, yeah. I just love it. It's really, really oh, mate, cool. I'm proper intrigued. I want to learn it's, all about it now. It's really, really cool. Yeah. It's, it's really, really cool. It's, it is interesting though. You only learn in the, in the, the things you do wrong though. And and, yeah. and, and, and anyone and it tells you any different. You don't read a book and then get good at something. Yeah. You, you have to physically do it and get wrong, get it wrong and then you get better at it yourself. Yeah. It's uh, absolutely true. The one thing I would say that that clearly was in me and I think has come through to entrepreneurship and, 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 and work has been passion. Yeah. So like I, and you talked earlier about belief, right? Yeah. I really wanted it. I wanted to win. Yeah. It is what I wanted more than anything for that crew, those group of people. Yeah. And the thing is particularly at uni was probably more profound because at school we had a big budget. Yeah. Like it, the numbers are just nuts. Like, I don't know what it was. 300, 400 grand a year just on rowing. Fucking hell. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's absurd. You go to the uni and they're like, yeah, well, there's there's a knackered twenty year old boat like held together with gaffer tape. Yeah, and that's when I got a, became like the president of the boat club eventually, and I helped fundraise for them and got sponsorship from local entrepreneurs, and and that for me was when I started to bring this whole team together. Right. So you started uni, you left school, you left your A levels, went in uni, and yeah. were you working with some of the same guys you went and did your A levels with? At uni. Yeah. No. So it was a fresh set of people. Yeah, and that's when I first made proper friends. Uh, do you think do you think that helped your popularity being good at that role? Do you think that? Um, I, I probably did. I don't. I don't think that was necessarily the the, the drive. It was weird, you know, because the thing for me at school with the, with the whole bullying thing, we had a couple of school trips where you could go like in the summer and like do whatever. Yeah. And that was mixed year groups. So I'm sure this was like it's your school, yeah. right? It was very like you don't talk to somebody in the other yeah. year because it's like yeah, yeah. Whatever bullshit school but that's what it is and these mixed year groups and I found on these um, trips I would get on with other boys from the other year groups yeah. like oh my god this is it I'm not yeah. an arsehole yeah, yeah. and you go back to school and you be back to normal Yeah. and that's when I knew there was nothing fundamentally wrong with me yeah. it just the situation was the situation yeah. so I knew I kind of knew Do you think you're I, more mature than some of the people in your, your peers at school uh, no I don't think so. I was an absolute wind up merchant yeah <laughs> I think some, I think you talk you talk to a lot of comedians and they say well they're comedians because they had to be funny to like yeah, yeah. you know stand out and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I think when I got to uni I had kind of the confidence kind of knowing actually I think I'm 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 not a dick. I've just got to find my right people. Yeah, yeah. So to answer your question, I think that was largely what happened. I just found my right people who didn't know anything about me and so I had a fresh yeah. start. Yeah, that's cool. Do you, how do you how do you 
could you could you explain how you get into like did you was there any points you can think about how you got all the lads working together or is there anything you can pinpoint or anything or not or do you think it was just getting them to train every day or is there anything in particular that you can yeah so it's 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 bringing people around a common cause and it's 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 vision yeah so i remember when i first so in rome this is an event called henley royal regatta which you might not have heard of you no. might have done We'll go on you, mate. We'll yep. blow your mind. <laughs> be hilarious. <laughs> it's like one of the most posh society events you can go to. Like yeah. women wear hats and it's like Royal Ascot, but for rowing. Yeah. We'll go, honestly. I'll be up for that, mate. But you, you'll love it. Be hilarious. Um, and that is one of these like, sem- to, to row at Henley is like, it, it's just, it, it's an absolute badge. When you've done it, that you've made it. That's yeah. like, you've got to be pretty good to even get in. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a huge qualifying yeah. um, thing to get in. And I remember turning up to Lancaster and, you know, it's kind of this diffuse group of people just going out. And I said, we're going to qualify for Henley. That's it. Let's do it. And they were like, oh, what? I said, let's do it. Why not? That's and so goal. it's about goal setting, right? And it might have been ridiculous yeah. and it might have been unattainable, but we had a really clear vision and I explained the vision of why we should do it. Yeah. And they were like, all right, we're on board. And that is what started that yeah. pulling together and that purpose because purpose is everything. Yeah, You've got to set a purpose, yeah, right? 100%, yeah, 100%. If you haven't got a purpose, you haven't got a vision, you haven't got a direction, you're just a load of random people sort of... Yeah. Well, you, 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 you're turning up to do an activity with no reason point. for it. Yeah, no point to it, exactly. Yeah. So at least you've given them some purpose. And then you've also given them, I've forgotten what it's fucking called now, but the re- the re- the words and the reason for doing it as well and you're giving them direct mission yeah mission statement yeah yeah, 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 yeah giving them mission. exactly so whilst at the time and this is it right you know it, it wasn't like let's write down a mission statement let's write down yeah, yeah, values yeah. it's not as structured as that no no but it was happening yeah yeah but and you probably didn't even know you had to do that you no. just you just in, inherently thought this is well it's just logical yeah 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 and maybe this is it within within entrepreneurship you know I, I come back to your point about education like do you need a business degree no I mean, yes, it's helpful. It's really helpful to know about accounts. It's really helpful to know about company law. Of course it is. Yeah, yeah. But no, you don't need it. No, you, well, we, well, you know when you're in business, you just hire that in if you need to. Yeah. Like I do. Like you have to. You, know, you just do, don't you? Man, I'm, I'm absolutely <laughs> buzzing. I've done this podcast with you now, mate. <laughs> it's so cool to know that about you. Oh, yeah. Thanks for sharing, mate. You're welcome. So, do you still do it now? No, I do other sport now. What do you know? <laughs> race cars do you really yeah what type of cars uh, I do a series called the 116 Trophy so it's BMWs it's what BM- BMW 1 series oh is it yeah but the coupes oh, sorry the hatchbacks yeah yeah I, it's, I'm, I'm proper obsessed yeah I love it love how, it how love did it. you get into that I could only really even contemplate it um, financially you know relatively recently yeah and uh Friend, I met somebody on a business accelerator. Um, I did one in Birmingham, and we just hit it off. And we realised we've got this common love, and we both like really, really want to do it. And I know how it started. I do know how it started. Actually, I, 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 a mate of mine, really, really good mate of mine, uh, bought me a track day as a birthday experience. Thanks, Andy. Love you, man. Uh, and it was a caterer at Donington Park, and. A lot of these track day experiences with an instructor, this for some reason they don't really do it anymore. I'm probably the reason why. Um, where you, they just literally like, there's the keys, off you go. And I was just like, and you could go full bore, go for your life. Like, no. helmet on. Yeah, if you want to kill yourself, knock yourself out. Like, do you know what no I mean? Way. Just go for it. And I was just hooked. And for me, like, I don't, maybe you'll unpick this psychologically, but for me, being on the limit of physics and actually like dancing with. Potential crippling death. It, 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 not so much. It's weird. That never really goes to my head. But for me, like, it, it's kind of. I feel like I've got a reasonable kind of grasp of working with people, and and I've got lots to learn. But I feel like I've got a reasonable craft in that. Dealing with like literally physics and the universe, and like you know, you, you're dealing with with how much rubber can hold onto asphalt, and that is a complete. That's a different thing to master. Yeah, it's yeah. a very different kind of thing. Yeah. So I, for me, getting to the edge of what is physically possible, I, I find the most indescribably exhilarating thing. Um, and it's, it's absolutely, it's batshit and it's insane and I love it. And I'm a lunatic and I fully appreciate that, but okay. I don't care. Do you, think, do you think it's something that you use as a tool to forget about work now? That's really interesting. So <laughs> you're going to be going, you did what? There's a bit in between my moat racing stuff 
Um, so it, we'll come on to this question, I promise. Um, it was for about 10 years I did amateur dramatics to a really high level. Um, and I did that because that was the only thing that stopped me thinking about work. The thought of going on stage in front of a thousand people and tap dancing and singing and not looking like a total penis, that stops you thinking about work. Yeah, I bet it does. <laughs> Fucking hell. I did amateur dramatics as well, you know. Did you actually? Yeah, yeah. Right, talk to me. What were you yeah, doing? Yeah, what, so, what? No, so mine was, I was very young. Okay. So, so I did it up to about 18. What, what, sing, you sing as well? Yeah, dance, sing a lot, make up, fucking the full shebang there. You've done it yes. all. Yes. Yeah, done it all. Yes, Ryan. Yeah, done a bit of quite a few plays, yeah. Did it all. So, yeah. Oh, well, I, well. That's what kept me in on Friday nights. <laughs> and then at that point, then I discovered girls and beer, and I was like, yeah, I'll see you later. You see, that's the reason I know, <laughs> that's the reason I originally joined the theatre company. My, the director, uh, she always says, she always rolls me out to, to say, oh, why did you join the company? <laughs> I always say to meet women. <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> it's a good idea, though. It's true. Yeah, it's a great idea. Thinking man's game. Yeah, it is definitely. <laughs> My little lad Jackson goes to um, a dance and drama class now, and he absolutely loves it. But I think it's, yeah, I think it's a really good way to build your character. So mm. I think it definitely pushes you to bounds. Yeah, I'm a massive, massive fan of it. Yeah, interesting, mate. Cool. Okay, so you did... Mate, <laughs> I'm going to have to go into this, mate. I'm plus, it's hard to keep on track, this, Leo, but I'm trying to keep it on track. So, Bolt's finished round about uni, 20-odd. Did your degree, or did you finish Bolting before you finished uni? No, no, no. So, so with the rowing stuff, I was doing through school, through university, and then after university. So, I finished probably rowing, probably when I was about 28. And the only reason I stopped coxing was because uh, I struggled to make weight. There's a minimum weight limit. All right. Um, just not eat more. No, no, minimum, not maximum. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right so you didn't eat less. And I got to the point where I was like, for me, biomechanically, like to get to that, the weight limit was 55 kg. Wow, that is fucking like that. Yeah, do, so like I'm five, seven and a bit. Yeah. The bit's very important to me. The extra bit comes from my hair. Um, that, like that's hard. Like, and I got to the point, I was so miserable dieting. Yeah. And the trouble, it, I, I don't want to get all like gender on this, but... In coxing at the time, there could be both men and women coxing ah. in the same category, but the the weight limit was different. So the the, the so the fe- if you're in a female, so say I cox women in the female in a female category, the minimum weight for a cox in females is fifty kilograms. In men, it's fifty five. But females can cox men, and men can cox females. So you would have girls trying to cox men who typically are smaller frames. So for that, for for a very a, a petite girl to get fifty five kg. Walking the park. I mean, there's girls that are healthy for their body size that are 50 kg and under, and yeah. that just because they're really petite. For a guy to hit 55 is hard. Yeah, they have to be absolute athlete. Yeah, really, really hard. I just, I can't, bar mechanically, I can't do it. Yeah, yeah. I can't do it. So that's what, one of the reasons I stopped. I was like, yeah, nah. And then you decided to start doing drama. And then I did drama for about 10 years, and then when I got, basically, there's a theme here. I go to the point where, like, um, I feel like I've maxed out my potential and then I switch so I got as far as I could be rowing bar going pro dropped as far as I got really in theatre to the point where I couldn't really go any further dropped and I'm doing most sport and I'll do that until I, I feel like I maxed it and then I'll do something else Amazing. love life for you yes have you had one yeah yeah yeah. I've got a long term girlfriend she's mega and, and when did that happen well when did I get together with her yeah uh, probably eight years ago ish now okay um, so she um, she's in the theatre space so she's currently in so London. you met her then doing that no ironically no so <laughs> despite my strategy I actually didn't um, but then she joined the same theatre group, theater group as me so we, we've done a number of we've done the whole thing of playing opposite each other oh. which actually isn't isn't quite what you, yeah it isn't quite the romantic fairy tale that you think it is yeah. I find it easier to play opposite people I'm not in a relationship with in a romantic part for some reason I don't know that's a bit weird probably um, you're going to get in trouble for that one to complete. no I don't think so <laughs> We well, probably, probably she'll probably she'll kill me. No, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I just, it's, weird. I don't know. It's weird. I, it's weird. Yeah. I don't know. Probably I'm a strange person, but she's now in London, um, training um, to be for the West End. She's just, I'm, I'm so unbelievably proud of her. So she, all the things that we've kind of talked about, she had similar things, except without the kind of backup of family and parents. Yeah. Very loving parents, but didn't have the resources to yeah. give the opportunity. Never. Um, was taken to theatre school as a kid or anything started it as an adult smashed it um, got to sort of 27 decided she wanted to give her dream a go wow there's no funding available no. she fundraised 30 grand herself wow 
like went two jobs, saved it. And actually, this is really interesting as a as a to talk about relationships. So obviously, I could have assisted with that financially, and it, I found it in a really difficult spot because on the one hand, to help her and f- and to let her be a strong, independent woman, yeah, she needed to own that journey and she wanted to own yeah, that yeah, journey. Yeah, yeah, sure. But the other hand, I didn't want her to suffer financially. So it's that's that's been a really interesting one, and we've had a lot of conversations about it because part of me is like, well, you know. I could just write the check. Yeah, yeah. But but then she really wanted to own that journey. So yeah. for her to have done that on her own, I, I cannot tell you how proud I am of her because yeah. I could have just, she could have just gone, I'm just going to Netflix and chill, feel sort it out. Yeah. And she didn't. She absolutely smashed it. Sometimes there's something to be said about that, isn't there? About um, the journey, enjoying the journey sometimes. Yeah. It, do, do you get what I mean? Like you, yeah. you, you didn't take the journey away from her. No. Yeah, like enjoying the journey. I don't like, like I sometimes think about that myself in work is that I've got to try and enjoy the journey, not just can consecutively look at the goal. Absolutely. Um, so it's, in, I also don't know anything about the professional theatre space until I spoke to Denise. Yeah. And Denise told me about how many, like, um, what's the word, Kay? how many uh, auditions. auditions you've yeah. got to do and things like that. Oh, it's brutal. Yeah. It's brutal. So she's just come to the end of her training now. Um, so she'll, she's got audition showcases for the next part of her course. She finishes in July and then that's it. She's in the big bad, big bad world. And yeah, it's, it's brutal, isn't it, mate? It's like, crazy. Like, talk about passion for you all. Like, you've got Drive. to... Like, that, that it's got to be, like, the best. Even you've better than business. Like, you've got to know what that more than anything, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, you've got to want it. Yeah. You've like, got to want it. Like, it's got to live and breathe out, mate, yeah. haven't you? Like yeah. in business to the point where you actually go oh, it's not worth it anymore you <laughs> get what I mean like yeah. but, but with that it kind of they can't be and it's savage I mean yeah. the amount of rejection that you, you, you potentially stay it's like getting rejected every week yeah yeah so you know fair play to her and, and like from a personal point of view for me like we, as we've talked like I, I absolutely love theatre yeah. so for us we've got that common interest like we don't know what to do we're going to see a show like always in London like always at various festivals for theatre oh, and stuff nice. Just love it. Like, great way to spend time. And yeah, yeah she's awesome. Like, amazing. I'm really, really lucky. Are you, are you planning anything for the future? Are you... Everyone asked me this. Uh, but Is it not an agenda? Or... I don't know. It's, so, I, I think we feel fairly relaxed about it. I think maybe this is a, a generational thing that's kind of changing a bit. Um, I mean, look, we're both really career driven. We're both really, really happy. Yes, it's not an agenda. Yeah. Look, never say never. I mean, it's like we've had the conversation about kids and stuff and it doesn't feel right for us at this time and we've yeah. both got concerns about kind of where the world is and stuff and I know a lot of people our generation have got some of those concerns and you know I think as well there's more acceptance now these days of you know if you've thought about it and you've reached a decision like you know d- maybe don't do it unless you're ready and the truth is neither yeah. of us are ready at the moment it's really hard yeah and and, may, and that's the way that's the way we look at it and yeah. I think I think we've got the relationship where we'll be honest if that changes for her or me and that didn't align then we'd have that conversation and, yeah it's and interesting isn't it? it's just it's, there's, there's quite a few people I know who don't have children at a certain age and it's like it doesn't always have to be an agenda right it doesn't always yeah. have to be the end you know it doesn't always have to be like that you know just, yeah. I think I, I've talked about this before and a lot of my time is um, life isn't a Disney and I think when you're growing up people make it like it's going to be like a Disney film yeah and you run off into the sunset and but life isn't actually like that yeah, at all. As far as Disney films go, I'm, I'll, I'll take mine. You know, it's pretty cool. I, uh, even when I, what, what I try and do is, we, whenever I've got, you know, we do have, I have tough moments. You know, you mentioned earlier about, you know, where you self doubt and fear of failure and all that stuff. But you know, at the end of the day, I'm just, I have to try and check myself. It's like, look, you know, I get, to, I basically do anything I could, I could ever dream of. Yeah. You know, bar the ridiculous. You know, I get to do everything I could possibly dream of. I can yeah. eat where I want to, go to what shows I want to. I get to race cars. I've got an amazing team, amazing family. Yeah. Have, have you ever? Have you ever, obviously school was a bit of a prickly time for you. Have you? Do you, do you ever? Obviously, there's some deep breath moments in running a business, isn't there, Theo? <laughs> like COVID. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> is there a, is there a goal too that you have? Like, I, I I train. You know, like I I'm not amazing at it, and I'm, I need to lose about two stone at the minute, but. Like training, walking, cold water therapy. Mm. Um, I, I have a counsellor. I go to counselling. Um, there's a lot of things that I've got in sort of my toolbox. You talk about when you do. Yeah. Um, is there any anything that you, you you have, or do you just? Yeah. So massively. So again, I've got a few a number of sort of coping strategies. For me, exercise is massive. Yeah. I run. You still run quite a bit, yeah. Every pretty much every day. Do you? What what sort of distance do you do? For um, you? around about eight kilometres a day. Uh, I always do it in the evening. Yeah. I can't run in the morning. Yeah. Um, and I use that to decompress the day. 
I yeah. don't run with music. Do you not? No. And I'm really lucky that where I live, I've got, I can just get out to the countryside. Just along run the, in the countryside? Re, yeah, really, really uh, quickly. Why not the music, mate? I can't go anywhere without music. So, obviously, music's a massive part of my life, as you've yeah, heard, but yeah. just for me running, it's, it's um, I, I think it's actually about getting back it, back in connection with, oh, this is going to sound so wanky and it's really not, really not me, but about getting back into connection with yourself and the world. So, I just like hearing the world, whether it's the birds singing or the wind going through the trees. A bit of grounding. Trees. Yeah, a bit, 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 bit of feeling human again. Yeah, and like there's a, there's a, there's, there's a, um, the, the path that I do, uh, there's a weir, so uh, I go sort of out of my, uh, where we live and along a towpath by a river, and there's a, a weir, and I, I've always loved the water, so I just love being by water. I, yeah. I find it very calming, very peaceful. Yeah, me so too. for me, just just hearing the the noise and weirs allowed, you know, yeah. hearing the noise and all that, I just find really soothing and. Yeah. And also the breath, I like listening to the breath, that's really weird, but no, the right. rhythm of the breath, and it's the same with rowing, right? Yeah. Rowing is all about rhythm. I mean, have you ever done any holistic stuff at all? Have you ever like, done breath work? Um, I did try it, so I, I've been through some really, really, really difficult patches, particularly around the time of buying swim time and the aforementioned challenges. Yeah. Um, so did experiment with it. Um, I did a meditation, uh, guided meditation course um, at a Buddhist centre, which was really pushing me out my boundaries yeah. um yeah i found it interesting i did get something out of it if i'm honest i've struggled to use that in kind of the way it was intended yeah um but i think probably the running is 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 close to that yeah i i honestly think running is probably the one of the best things you can do to clear yeah. your head like it there's absolute i've never come back off a run and gone fucking i'm still in a bad mood I put things to bed. I, it's totally a conversation, internal dialogue when I'm running. Yeah. I, there's, there's no other... I don't run for health benefits, although there's health benefits oh, from... Massive, massive health benefits. But the, I, I, can, I can go and do 5K, no problem, in 25 minutes, 26 minutes now, no problem, just go and do it now. Yeah. And I think that's great for a 40-year-old bloke with two kids. I'm happy as Larry with that, and I'll just take that every day. Paul Lewis can do it in 16 minutes, but... <laughs> okay, that's quick. Yeah, he's quick. That's really quick. Yeah, so, but it, I'm happy that I can do that, but the reason why I do it is... I've had a particularly bad day. Some things have yeah. gone wrong that haven't gone wrong and I go for a run and that clears my head. Yeah. And, that, and that's what I do it for. That makes a lot of sense. So I, I kind of use it for two different things. So my, I kind of do training runs, uh, which is exactly for that. But then for me, like I try and do park run most Saturdays and I do end sort of 10Ks and stuff. And for me, that's where my batshit crazy competitive side comes out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I do quite like psychologically mauling other competitors. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's probably where I'm a bit unhinged. And this probably all comes back to the rowing and the same with the motorsport. Yeah. So I I love trying to um, get in people's heads and deconstruct them. Yeah. Uh, and that probably makes me sound like an absolute maniac. No. Um, and sport's probably a safe space to do it. I don't. I genuinely don't use it that much in business. Yeah. Um, but it, it's a tool in my arsenal. Yeah. Um, particularly with disputes so yeah, I, I do yeah. quite like disputes yeah. um, <laughs> much to the amusement of uh, a lot of people that I work with um, I like the tactics of it but that there's a psychological tactic to it yeah, that yeah. I find and that's the thread with sport yeah. and I remember back to the rowing days I mean I'm such a bastard to go up against like I'm terrible but I remember um, this is generally this is one of the most awful things I ever did but also the most entertaining so there was a thing called the War of the Roses, which was a inter-university competition between Lancaster and York that's been going on since the universities started. So it's an annual competition, cross sport. Okay, yeah. so it's a university world competition, but each sport will compete. And at the time, the York team were better. So a bit like in football, um, there's rankings in rowing, whatever. So they were like category two, we were category four, whatever. In other words, they were quicker than us. Yeah. And I'll never forget this. And I remember, I remember there was a... If I, it's weird, like, you can just feel it in the air. I was like, the boys really want this. We're all, like, fucking pumped. Like, just yeah. feel this, like, tension, this yeah. electricity. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And I remember on the on the road to the start line, I said to the guys, right, listen, right, as I come at the start, I'm going to bollock you, right? I'm going to tell you to get your shit together. And I want you to f just fuck up. But just, it's an act, right? So we come at the start line, and I was like, fuck, going out. Like, guys, what the fuck's that? We're never going to win this race. Get your shit together like this. Da -da -da -da. And then we come along the start line, and I'm such a bastard. I crank, because we have microphones in the boat, I crank the speakers up, right? And, it's, <laughs> it's, and I, I, I knew the guys would go out like a scolded cat, right? I knew that they would go out the blocks like they, they stab somebody. 
went out of the blocks, like never seen him go out of the blocks like this, like completely unsustainable level of pace. It's like sprinting the start of a 5K. Yeah. And we're up, we were up like a length, which is just unheard of in rowing. And I cranked the mic up. I <laughs> literally, I turned around because I got a guy next to me from the other career and I was like, He's, he's, he's screwing up, he's, that's, he's gone, he's blown up, he's blown up. And the other guy turned around, turned around from their crew, go, what are you talking about? Like this. And I like, realised, got in the head. Yeah. And then they started like basically having an argument amongst themselves. And that was it, you're gone. 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 I mean, it's savage, probably irresponsible, but at the end of the day... There's a game player there, isn't it? I like that, mate. I'm there to win. Yeah, yeah. I don't, please don't judge me. I don't do that that often, but yeah. like, yeah, in, in extreme circumstances... I, yeah, I, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, mate. I think it's quite fine. I think it's just, it just, it's just a way of doing things. It's all right. But you've got to do it. You've got to do it, isn't it? Yeah, and it's the same now, like with the boat racing, like putting people under pressure and kind of trying to... I just love that side of psyching somebody out, even just on the track, and you're kind of like... You're literally... You're watching the behaviour of the car, and you could work out... Do you think that, mate, is because you had to be fiercely independent when you were younger? Because uh... if, you if you can hold it together and independently on your own and you can have all them pressures and put all them things in play outside and you can you can know internally that I'm going to be all right. I don't know, it just jumped in my head then I was talking to you, listening to you. I'll tell you something interesting. So I think with the motorsport, it's, it is fundamentally a team event. Yeah. So so yes, so A, I share the drive with somebody else. So yeah. this, it's, it's not just my performance, it's the other person's performance within, within that race. But also there's a whole team behind it. So, you know, the preparation of the car, the strategy from the pit wall, like there is, it is a team element. Yeah, okay. So... I'm not sure. No, okay. I'm not sure, but I mean, it's it's perfectly plausible. Yeah, yeah. it just made me think, you know, yeah, like, no, no. It's, because you, you, you're putting yourself, you know, playing all these games at the same time, you think, thinking, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be all right at the same time because I've been through on, on this the, half. The thing that's, that I find most interesting, I'm really sorry if it's boring, but I think it's really interesting. The thing I find most interesting with the particular the motorsport that's probably shocked me more than anything, and I kind of, whilst I knew this going into it, I kind of didn't appreciate it, is the level of performance required. So if you take running... Okay, so if you're going to run a 10K, you could fluff a few steps, you could, you know, scrape your feet on a trip. Yeah, you can uh, stop. So you could stop and still deliver a good performance. Yeah, yeah. Okay, rowing. So you could, you could miss a stroke, you could, I've been in races where you've caught the start up and you've still won. Yeah. Like in most sports, a mistake doesn't define the outcome. Yeah. In motorsports, and this is a thing that has shocked me, you could make, you could, you, you, we, you, we, we race for 90 minutes, roughly 45 minutes each. So 45 minutes, you're going absolutely balls to the wall, like on the absolute edge of what that car can do. You make one mistake on one corner at one point in 45 minutes and it's gone. Mad that, it? So you look at the kind of percentage performance, the, the, the pass rate effectively on a sport, you're, you're, you're in the 90%. And that is the thing I'm finding the most exhilarating with my mindset of training myself because because we've all, we can all push we can all push the envelope right but pushing the envelope consistently yeah is a very different skill set to know okay I can hold that level for 45 minutes under pressure and that is what I'm really enjoying learning about myself and and I'm still finding where that is and coming close to the line and I've gone over the line and made mistakes yeah. and I find that really really interesting yeah me too because psychologically yeah, yeah. High perf- that to me is the definition of high performance yeah. consistently performing yeah, at a yeah. level yeah it's so true it's really interesting because in business you always have an allowance don't you for things going wrong yeah even though you're trying to push the team as much as you possibly can and do as much as you possibly can you always think like, you, know, you know there's something going to go wrong so if it happens I can, I can allow for it yeah. Well, you can't offer it that. <laughs> Interesting. That's, so, that's really clever. And I, I, it's given me a newfound respect for anybody who does it, like professionals. Yeah, I bet it has, yeah. I mean, you're talking about the time... Ty- I'm talking about, you know, for me, a mistake would be you break a tenth of a second too late and it's game over. No way. That, that could literally... Because we're, we're on that fine line of the car's about to go. Literally a tenth of a second. And that could happen once in 45 minutes and it's game over. And game over could be, to be really blunt about it, you're dead. Yeah. Probably not. But you know, you'd come you'd, off the track. Yeah, I mean, you, you could be very seriously injured, um, is the worst case. But yeah, there's a good chance you'll be off the track and that's it, game over. Fucking hell. It's mad. No wonder you find it so good. I feel yeah. like I want to go and do it. I want to go and buy one series, come join you. Let's do it. Basically, I'm a lunatic. That is, that is what you, le- you need to not, take away from this. Yeah, no. <laughs> Um, I admire so much for that, mate. I think it's um, like it intrigues me even more to find out more about it myself. I feel like I want to come and book a day with you. Let's do it. 
cool that, mate. So, get back on track. Mm. University, you left university and you got your degree and you're like, give me a job. Yeah. What did you do? So, um, in my final year, the boat club needed some money. And <laughs> it's weird, like, you're like, oh, I wasn't entrepreneurial. And then you're like, oh, actually, this is quite entrepreneurial. Yeah. And I don't know how I found this out, but basically there was... We were a campus university with university kind of accommodation on campus, but it couldn't hold all, all students, so there's off site accommodation in the city of Lancaster. And there was external providers, um, you know, like literally professional landlords who would build tower blocks, whatever, but they were banned from advertising on campus. Kind of like, I kind of get it, but yeah. whatever. So I organised lunch with one of these landlords, and I was like, right, I'll tell you what you need to do. I've got 40 pretty hot, muscly guys. Depends what you're into. <laughs> yeah. and I was like, look, you know, let's not beat around the bush. They, they get attract attention. Maybe the right attention, maybe the wrong attention. They attract attention. They're freaking huge. Yeah. Put your Lego on them. Let's do a deal. Put your Lego on them. And uh, basically agreed a three-year deal with them. Quite a decent amount of money to put that company on all of their kit, all of the boats, everything. And that was the first commercial sponsorship deal, to my knowledge, um, certainly I was ever aware of, that had ever been done for that boat club. Um, and at the end of it, he said, nobody has ever had the balls that you had to, uh, to do this. Do you want a job? No way. And I was like, all right. And uh, he was like, I, I want to start recruitment.com. Uh, uh, this was in what? I can't remember this was. Probably 2004, five, maybe? Six? Six. Um, yeah. No That's way. what I did. that, mate. Isn't it? <laughs> that is so cool, that. Okay, I'm going to try and... St- I need to... We need to stay on track. So, recruitment.com. Yeah. What's recruitment.com? It was for... Um, uh, it's a thing called interim management. You might know this more than I do. I, yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't know about it. So, apparently, really, really top-end like roles like FDE, CEOs, etc. Yeah. If there's been a big exit or something, you know, you will read about in the press, you'll have things called interim managers. Right. So these are like super experienced guys or girls uh, that would come in, you know ridiculous day rates, £2,000 a day, £5,000 a day, yeah. whatever, but for very short-term period. Yeah. So hyper-experienced. So Jumping in like a consultant almost. Yeah, but, but actually taking the full-blown responsibility. Running the business. Yeah, literally running it. So, yeah. you know, I don't know, let's say the CEO of the post office gets fired tomorrow yeah. for the IT scandal. Whilst they're fine, they may or may not do this, but whilst they're finding the next one, they might bring someone in for three months to, to hold the fort. That would right. be a highly experienced, right. seasoned guy or girl and be paid an awful lot of money yeah to do it to do it short term so it was a, a it was a dating service that right, right. and it was a spectacular flop was it yeah and then did you last there then or no you... trying to be an accountant just left and went to Jim Beam accountant yeah he wasn't very happy he did I think he I think the exact term was he called me a fucking wanker um, which I mean probably was fairly accurate at the time but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't take it to heart <laughs> Um, yeah. And then you just, you went to, so did you, with accountancy, is it, you didn't have to retrain again, did you? Not yeah, well, you do, you do like on the job training. On the job so, training. So you, yeah. Like you, an apprenticeship sort of thing. Kind of, yeah. So you're, you're paid, it's like a grad scheme type thing. Yeah. So you're paid, I did it. Uh, probably the most miserable I've ever been in my life. Um, sorry to all the accountants out there, but it, it is, it is terrible. Um, Definitely one of the things you have to have a passion for. Yeah, like I if you don't Like if you don't have a passion for that, then you've fucked. That being said, that being said, uh, probably the most valuable thing I've ever done in my life and probably the thing I use every single day of my life in what respect? just the technical knowledge of accounting Yeah. and probably the most useful thing I took which I never thought I was going to use um, was tax we, did, we had to do as part of doing your chartered accountancy there's yeah. a range of topics around yeah. business one was tax so I did um, the basic tax and the I don't know what it's called I think it's called advanced tax but was, there was a small sort of online one then a full ball one when I say full ball I think they were like three hour exams. Wow. Like, oh, I mean, hideous yeah. and hard. Yeah. Like, th- this is the kind of place where they will write things in the exam question to trick you up. Yeah. So it's, it's proper hardcore. Yeah, you need but to know it inside out. You need to know it inside out. Um, and it's something I use every day. Because whilst the tax regime might change, well, every day is a big saturation, but whilst the tax may, regime may change, understanding the fundamental building blocks really helps you make good strategic decisions and understand if you can understand kind of how everything interconnects yeah it informs the strategic thinking yeah 
I do wish I had that knowledge myself a little bit better, but I have mum for that from so bank of mum. She does that side of it, me. But, oh, that's but perfect. I can definitely see how it helps you in business, knowing that really well. Yeah, really, really well. Yeah. And, and to be really blunt, I'll probably get in trouble with this. Some, I would maybe say more than some, I've come across, oh, let's put this, I've come across in my career more professionals than I care to count who are supposedly qualified lawyers who are accountants and who are not shite. Yeah. And they may well be qualified. They may well be very, very good at PwC in London, you know, doing the audit on Boeing or something. Yeah. But in terms of the real world of actually... Yeah, no. And the, fact, mis- and the mistakes these buggers make yeah, as well. You yeah, believe. No. You know what, right? We, we, we've had that. And we've got our own personal account and we've had the same guy for years. We try and go for bookkeepers and stuff all the time. We've just got a new one now and she's actually touchwood brilliant and I love her. Um, but prior to that we've been through the mill with them we've had to use our personal bookkeeping account yeah. and it costs so much money but yeah I've never, I didn't know the value of that until I got a really good one it is, it is useful because you can you can call people out and you normally only need to call people out once yeah and I find that's quite handy yeah again back to your psychological strategic thinking <laughs> But I guess it's... But, but no, no, not, not to be a dick, but like, you know, at the end of the day, if you're paying someone to do a service, particularly bloody professionals who charge a fortune... Yeah, they do. I mean, they really do. Yeah, yeah. They Solicitors charge, are a joke. Yeah. All for, well, there are good ones, but I mean, I've... Again, I wish I could talk about it, but... Yeah. God, I've seen some things with lawyers that you just, you just cannot believe it's allowed. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, you know, at the end of the day, we can all read. <laughs> you yeah, know, you yeah. can... If you want to, if you, I mean, I pretty much taught myself law for yeah, yeah, three years. Yeah, yeah, it's, all, it's all online. Yeah, you can count. get the books. Yeah. So yes, so counting. Uh, and then that's then when I get into the period that unfortunately I can't talk a huge amount about with the, uh, the, the swimming organisation. Yeah. So I was there for sort of four or five years, did a big digital transformation of it, which is where the tech piece came in. Um, huge operational transformation on it in terms of uh, building bespoke software. That came to an unfortunate end then purchase swim time and then we're coming more into the into the current yeah, day and then we can talk a bit more about this now so buy you buy swim time mate yeah god knows how you even facilitate all that get the funding together i don't even know i did it yeah but you did it yeah and how swim time made up now mate how does that work who is you the owner the 100 percent owner how does that work now? No, no um so uh, fa- uh family and i kind of uh, own it but yeah. we also have an external investor that came in in 2017 who was in that room when I told that story of the rainbow ah. he oh. was my three or five seat I think he's going to probably be really annoyed at me that I got where he was in the boat wrong but he was in that boat um, and we've remained friends ever since oh nice so we met at uni rowing um hit it off to the same course. Yeah. He took a more corporate career. So he's went on to do an MBA at Oxford University wow. um, and now works in international business. Um, and we made friends ever, ever since and we get on like a house on fire. Yeah. And yeah, he, he very kindly invested, in it, invested yeah. and yeah. So you bought Swim Time and quickly learned about, I guess, franchising quite mm. quickly. Mm. How did that work out, mate? How did it, would it just just went for it and learnt it basically as you sort of attitude to everything really isn't it it's just it's to our point earlier is there much to learn about franchising no not really I, think, <laughs> I, I guess I guess I mean, what is there to learn I think for me for me the only thing I've learnt about franchising which I didn't realise at the time when I came on board with mum and dad was the amount of coaching that goes into supporting franchisees I didn't understand that part of it for me that's where I so yes and so I think the only thing I'd caveat in with my point is I bought an existing business yeah. with an existing team in it yeah so i think that comment is is irresponsible for me to say if you if you were trying to start a franchise from scratch yeah yeah but i'm always coming in as a business owner an established business a bfa accredited franchise yeah that i just became owner of yeah so well, slightly different journey. so i think it's different for me so i think yeah. it, i do want to clarify that because i think that's that's i don't yeah. want to <laughs> i don't want to give the wrong impression that, to people. That, yeah see the thing yeah so i guess i guess it is a slightly different journey isn't it for us both in that mm. respect is that that, that's the bit that I not struggle with but that's the biggest thing in my life day to day of my business is coaching and supporting the franchisees and getting their mindset right teaching them how to grow teams teach them how to grow the business mm. keeping their mindset that's what my role is really is recruiting franchisees but back to what Gemma does and I support Gemma well mm. I'm the person they speak to on their journey and so is Ross but I think the hardest bit for me about franchising is 
is the coaching aspect of it for franchisees and teaching them how to be entrepreneurs, so to speak. Mm. Um, but you are completely correct. Franchising isn't that difficult. Yeah, I think, and I've got a particular view on it that I know doesn't resonate with everybody um, and, and is different. So my, my general view is a successful brand will will yield successful franchisees by default. Yeah. And therefore that will perpetually move the circle round, right? So to me, to quote whoever said this quote, I should know it, it's all about the money stupid. So if you can build a brand that is credible economically, so in other words, somebody can, can, can genuinely, within, within, to your point, training and coaching, earn a, a good living and a good return on investment, yeah. that has got to be the core. Yeah. And I think if you get that right, yeah. and then you can say to the franchisees, which, which we've done many, many times, look guys, it's really simple. If you get rich, we get rich. Yeah. So you might not understand why we're doing something, but we want you to know that if, we, if you lose money in your business going on the pan, we're, we're toast. So yeah. why would we yeah, yeah. Why would we ruin that symbiotic relationship? Yeah, yeah. And, and that has been what's driven my decisions. Now, I've gone down the very, I say I, we, uh, as a team, have gone down a very assertive re- approach to that. Yeah. And I'm quite, I can be quite brutal. I mean, Rachel's less so than I am. Yeah. I, I'm very much, there's a set of rules we've all signed up to. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. You break them, you're gone. Yeah. Not always the case, but generally, yeah. if you're on the right side of them, happy days, no, yeah. no problems for me. And, and that's the way I look at it, and I run it very dispassionately, yeah. with no emotion. So that's where we differ slightly on it. it, it yeah. It, 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 we differ slightly on it. I don't even know why that is. I think it's just gone about in different, different journeys, haven't we? But that, that's, I, we probably are a little bit too lenient with some of the franchisees, but we are quite brutal as well at the same time, because we've got a quite... Let me explain a little bit about my business so I can explain why. Let's do it, yeah. Um, with, with, the, with clients we supply, you're supplying people to look after vulnerable people in nursing homes and care homes and learn disability services and mental health hospitals. If you break any of them rules, it can be detrimental, whatever the rules are. So we are strict. And to be honest with you, we're probably too strict. But I'd like to sleep at night, and that's what my mum's rule is. We, we just like to sleep at night. Mm. You've got staff working 24 hours, seven days a week, seven, you know, 365 days a year all over the country looking mm. after into all sorts of different types of services, we're quite mm. strict because mm. we want to sleep at night and we want to make sure that they're delivering a good job and everyone's trained and got experience and should be doing should be in that role. Mm. So in terms of compliance, we're very, very strict and probably too strict. In terms of someone not performing well and probably a little bit too lenient and should be getting more stricter over time, but at the minute I'm probably letting people get away with not doing what they're supposed to be doing sometimes. Well, that's fair enough. Yeah. I, I, know, I don't think we've got the answer. And, and I think it, it's really important. I, I know we've not had a chance to really talk about this, but I'm, I'm, I'm acutely aware that I'm a particular type of individual mm-hmm. that, and we talked a lot about individualism. I know it's been a thread that we've discussed, but yeah. I would be nothing without the people around me. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, all of the team are phenomenal. Phenomenal. Um, Rachel, I know you've interviewed in particular, is... I can imagine she beats you up sometimes. Can be? Beat you up a bit, I don't sometimes. Um, Not beat you up, but you can have good discussions about business. <laughs> I'm sure she'd like to sometimes. I think I'd frustrate her. Um, no, we do, we do have a... I think we have an incredibly healthy relationship. Yeah. I think... I hope my whole team feel this. I, I certainly want them to feel that they can challenge me. I... I couldn't. I could never work with a group of yes people. Yeah, yeah. So if somebody doesn't agree with me, that's fine. And, yeah, and yeah. as long as it, as long as I think it's a, it's a rational and, and yeah, well yeah. formed debate, crack on. Yeah, yeah. And At the end of it, I might agree with you. I might, I might say no. I'm sticking to my path. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I want people to challenge. Yeah, so, yeah. of course. And, and yeah, you've interviewed Rachel. Yeah, she won't pull no punches. That's what I'm saying to you. That, yeah, I, I, but, I meant it in that way. No, no, I know. I, I, I mean, she, but she's, she's phenomenal. I mean, yeah, she's an absolutely yeah. rapper. And there's, yeah. n- there's no question. Nothing that we've talked about today in terms of post from time would have happened without her and and the entire team. Yeah, yeah. Th- there's no question. You, you may, uh, any, anyone who runs a business knows it's the team. Yeah, like it, and it sounds so cliche sometimes, but like the fund, the, the reality is, you can't run a business no. on your own. You haven't got a business if you're on your own. No, hundred percent. You're self-employed. You haven't got a business if you're on your own. Hundred percent. And I, you know, it's something I'm always working on is. It, Invariably, as the business owner and kind of the, the figurehead, I, I, you know, I get rolled out more than most to kind of talk about the business, and yeah. it, 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 
it's difficult. It's not difficult is the wrong word, but trying to find that balance where you you're able to um, share the recognition in the right way is is always is always a bit of a challenge yeah, because yeah. You know, it's like today you know I've I've come on as as, as Theo and yeah. you know it's like in the, invariably is a conversation about me but actually so much of the story that that we've talked about isn't I mean yeah. yes it's it's about my relationship to that story but it's also wouldn't exist without the other people 100%, around, yeah. around me yeah hundred um, percent so yeah I'm I'm extremely lucky with the team yeah extremely lucky did you do you think um, you, something I always think is something that's in my day-to-day life is trying to coach people how to be good leaders and I still think leadership is an ongoing skill that I'm trying to get right and I definitely don't get right but I think knowing I acknowledge that and I try and work on it all the time and I question myself I feel like you've been through some journeys with the sports particularly that you've learned good leadership you might not recognize it but you definitely have yeah do you think you do you think you're a good leader now? Do you think you've been in some t- tricky? Do you think you go? For, do you think that has helped you? I mean, the sports, and do you think it helps you now? A hundred percent. I do. I do think I'm a good leader, um, and I, I, it's something I take very, very seriously, yeah. and I see it as a. As I, can, I can see you do. Yeah. yeah, I see. I do see it as a privilege. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I see it as responsibility, and almost I see it as a custodian thing. So yeah. I almost. For me, certainly with swim time, I feel like I'm looking after it for the next person, almost in a weird way. I feel different to that with some of the startups because they're startups, yeah. but particularly swim time. You know, Barry and Linda started it this in their kitchen in, yeah. in 1998. It was a personal journey for them. I sp- still speak to them now. Yeah. You know, it, I do feel a sense of responsibility. Yeah, to, yeah. To, to you keep, will do, won't you? To keep that alive. And there's um, so many people's families involved in it, and all. Uh, ma- of course. Yeah. Massively. S- some people's careers involved in all sorts. But I think as a leader, so for me, a CEO, leader, I think it's kind of the same thing. I think it has three roles. I don't do many of these sound bites. I want to give you a few. I'm sure you'd appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> One, set a vision. Yeah. Two, hire the right people. And three, make sure there's enough money in the bank. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Nothing more, nothing less. Now, yeah. those three things are very difficult. They're mm-hmm. extremely difficult to do well. Yeah. To your point on, on, on hiring the right people, that I, I preface that with a sort of a 2B which is you hire great people and get the fuck out of their way. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So what I try and do, and I'm not perfect at it, um, but I try and hire great people um, and create an atmosphere where I feel that they can be themselves in a safe space, but create a safety net that I hope they know I'll catch them if they fall. But actually what I want them to do is go on their own journey and to fail in a healthy way for them and for the business because I think that makes better decisions and it creates better culture. Because there's no point, you, in my opinion, you or me or any any of the leaders standing out going, you need to do X, Y, Z. There are times when we're called upon to do that and that's fine. Yeah, you have to make decisions. I'm sure we'll talk about COVID in a minute, but COVID's, COVID's example where, yeah. yeah, all eyes are on you. You know, you've, yeah. got to fi- you've got to sort that shit out. Yeah, yeah. But in a lot of things, somebody will come to me with a problem and I'll be like, you sort it out. Yeah. And the, my pet hate is if somebody comes to me and, t- and says, what do I do? If somebody comes to me and says, I've got a problem. I think I could do X, Y, Z. What do you think? Love it. Yeah. Like you've, you've thought of the problem. You've had a, come some ideas. Let's chat. Love that. If yeah. you come to me and go, I don't know what to do. Nine out of 10, I'll go, yeah. come back. Come back with an answer, please. Have a think. Yeah. If you're really, really stuck, we'll talk about it. Yeah. But I've put you in that position or Rachel has or one of my team has put you in that role because yeah. we believe you can do it. Yeah. I don't want you to come with the problem. Yeah. Don't bring the problem to me. So step up. Yeah, yeah, bring the solution. I, I think that's quite healthy. And, and there's, there's elements around the edges where we don't quite get that right. And I'm sure there's some people who come in that culture and maybe find that a bit intimidating. Yeah. But just because it's it's what they want to hear doesn't mean it's what they need to hear. Yeah. And I think that differentiation for a leader is really important. So it, it's what the sentence I just made up one day and it sort of stuck with me is try and be the leader they need, not the leader they want. Love it. Love it. Love it. It, 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 and, uh, you know what that means don't you sometimes yeah. there's difficult things that you have decisions yep. and conversations you're having behind closed doors so that they act in a certain way afterwards yep. and they go for a learning journey and a lot of the time the odd and correct me if you're wrong but you go for it yourself you you've taught yourself a situation you've gone shit I'm fucked up here I'm not going to do this again I'm going to make sure that and then you, you see that scenario a very similar scenario happening and you then have to teach that person yeah yeah absolutely agree with you 100% so interesting, mate. 
that's what that's that's the bit I love, and I think this is where my psychological stuff comes in. Where I like thinking about how people act in their behaviour and talk about ego and talk about, and that's where I talk with the franchisees because they have to hire staff in their business, and it's all about creating relationships mm. in our business. And it's like I like to talk to franchisees about that and yeah. why they've acted in a certain way or why that team members just left. And I'll say, well, did you think about this and why did you do that? And I like that bit. That's the bit mm. that I like. That's my bit. Being so passionate about it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Okay. You mentioned COVID a couple of times now. Yeah. And it's interesting for me because it must have been a big thing for you, but it wasn't that big a thing for us because we just carried on. The only thing is the team went and worked at home uh, and we just, it, but I, I say that because it was fucking horrendous because a lot of people died and, and it was a really bad time. But mm. in terms of actual business, 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 it, w the team went and worked at home. I took on a business development person. I also took on a lad who'd just been laid off from our biggest competitor. And we we came to work every day. We were in this building. In fact, we were in this room and we just lived on pizza because it's the only place to live in. And we worked all the way through. The rest of the team worked from home and we just carried on. And Ollie went out seeing clients with an umbrella in the car parks to carry on seeing clients because it was the only way clients would see us and we just fought our way through because we was not having we weren't accepting that we can't carry on love it what happened with you mate what <laughs> how did you cope um yeah so i mean the simple truth is you know we, we were we were shut down under the regulations yeah um so the headlines are you know we lost millions yeah millions plural in revenue uh I think I don't know what the last count was. Six and a bit. I mean, this is not a fun time. Um, but it's interesting how the conversation is. You know, it's interesting how we've taken this long to get here because actually everything that I think we've already talked about kind of will probably make more sense of what I'm about to say. I will. I don't think I'll ever forget. And I know Rachel will never forget. We we um, the the run up to the week. We'll actually just come back. So. I got on the last flights out of Vietnam. I had, was on one of the last flights out of Singapore before they shut the airspace because I was at an event, um, event in Singapore in January um, with my uh, investor, a guy called Martin, actually, yeah. a, a, an aquatics event. We're on the last flight out, and I remember, I remember um, Becky, my girlfriend, uh, came to the kitchen uh, from the back, and I said, this is happening. This is coming here. I remember seeing the news and seeing what was happening, and it wasn't really being talked about then. And I think I was about three weeks ahead of everybody else. And we'd already started, we'd had the conversation internally, even before it was kind of in the news. So I felt quite smug in terms of I'd kind of, well, no one wants to be smug about calling the bad shit, right? Yeah. But I'd kind of called it. So yeah. that was quite good. So I kind of knew what was coming. We never planned for a total shutdown. So we went through models of 70% capacity reduction, 50%. We never went to 100% shut. Yeah. We did various capacity restrictions. And i never forget, the week before, one of our competitors called off all lessons and one of our major, major venue suppliers rang me up and he said, what are you doing? I was like, no, nah, mate, we're good. I think we're okay. We've got a plan. We're fine. Because in the day, and this is really interesting, you're putting kids in, in basically disinfectant, right? Yeah. Chlor chlorine is disinfectant. You're essentially putting them in bleach, effectively. Yeah. For those listening, you, I'm, that is a bit of a joke. But yeah, it, it is. <laughs> you put a kid in with COVID in water, they're going to come out clean, yeah. literally. You know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah. it disinfects. So I was kind of like, well, it's all the environments to put people in. It's pretty good. And then I remember, and it 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 it, it took me by surprise how um, hard I took it. But we started to get some emails in from customers about we were irresponsible. We were putting kids' lives at risk. Like how dare us? And that I I. I found that really hard because I'd, we'd, we'd thought about this so much and we'd risk assessed it and we'd, we've got experts and we've got aquatic experts in our team. We'd, we've got some of the most highly trained people in the country who, who lecture on this stuff. You know, we'd really thought this through. So that was really, really hard. And then about a day after they, you know, the cacophony started coming in of like, you know, how, you know you're going to be killing our kids. Yeah, you know, yeah. And I was like, fuck this. Yeah. And I called it. Yeah. So it shut the business down. And I remember ring, ringing, ringing a couple of our key players and we had this franchisee call and fuck man it was brutal like everyone was crying like and you, you talk about resilience like I was absolutely on the cusp of losing it like I was just proper just I didn't know how I was going to get through it because yeah. honestly mate I was shitting myself yeah I had amount of money in the bank and I knew that we had 
not that much headroom because we were inv- at that period we were investing a lot in the tech, yeah. we were running the business quite hot, yeah. and I was like, "Fuck, like yeah. this might, this might be it." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember that call the franchisees, and you can't give it out, and like you know, people's cameras are going off as they were, and the thing that was, I hope Rachel doesn't mind me saying this, but it, like Rachel, you know, found it a bit tough, and at one point she turned the camera off, and she was leading the meeting, like. The whole thing. Very Fuck! Good. Like yeah. literally, your 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 MD, or she was operations director at the time. Your 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 operations director at the time, right? Is leading this meeting with all the tactics and stuff of what we're going to do. She has to excuse herself, yeah. turn her camera off because yeah. it's difficult. Yeah. I know. I'm just like, um, um, and it's like the actor came into me. I was like, it was like some kind of newsreader announcing there's been a nuclear blast. I was like, okay, right. Well, this is the plan, guys. You know, did a, don't know how I got through it. And then obviously Boris shut shut us down on the Sunday after this was the Thursday. I think she was on the Sunday. And I remember feeling a bit kind of like, ah, fuck, <laughs> basically. Yeah, yeah. Like so sitting at home, like, okay, this is weird. And then, I don't know what happened. I can't remember the exact order of how this all happened. But I think that was when the, because that's you joined the Mastermind thing on Facebook, didn't you? Sean's yeah. thing. I don't know when I joined, but like, I know Adam Lovelock and Coconut, a few of the guys, and I was messaging a few people being like, oh, how are you getting on? Da, da, da. Got onto the Mastermind, and then I realised loads and loads of people were struggling with kind of like, how do you take that, how do you digitise the business to react if you're not closed? And then somebody said, come who it was? I speak to somebody and they were like, you know that tech you've got? Well, can we have it? And I just went, ping. Yeah. And then I got all of my team on the phone uh, on like a video call and I was like, right, here's the deal. I've got no money. We've got no money in the bank. Okay. Uh, this is fucking mental. I'm going to start a brand new business called Franscape. We're going to sell this software um, to the franchise sector don't know if it's going to work I don't know how to price it I've got nothing I can't afford to pay you um, do you want to work for free and I promise you if this works I'll pay you back thinking no one's going to do it and they all just went for fun mate. we're in and one of the most moving kind of humbling, yeah, I nearly started crying then that humbling, was so nice. humbling yeah. moments in my life and you're there just going and they were just like we believe in you let's do it so, mate, in four weeks, and I still cannot get my head around this. Like, it's one of these things that I'm just like, I, 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 I don't know how it happened. But in four weeks, we created a brand, a whole sales process. We had a CRM in. We, were, we were, had to completely re-engineer the product. We had to work out a pricing strategy. Like, how do you demo it? How do you sell it? How do you, how do you onboard new customers? Within five weeks, we signed our first client. Well done, mate. Oh. Like, and now, today, we've just gone through our third birthday. And uh, in March, we almost, almost, almost broke even for the first month because wow. it's been the most painful business. It's the most cash-consuming business. Yeah, it's tech. Is it is oh, mate, CRMs are massive, aren't they? Mate, there's months we've been burning thirty grand a month. Yeah, yeah. It's like crazy, yeah. crazy, crazy, yeah, crazy, crazy, yeah. crazy. And I, I, I don't know how it happened. I don't know what I did. I, I, I luck. I don't know. I, I, but you talked. We talked earlier about resilience and just getting on with it and just the mental thing. And the weirdest thing, Ryan, the weirdest thing is I never did know what to do. And I can't explain it. I can't, at no point did I not know what needed to happen, ever, at that entire process. I might have been tired, and yes, I was working crazy. I worked, never worked harder in my life, mate. I was doing 10 hour days, yeah. like every day, seven days a week to get this going. Because I was like, I'm not throwing all this away. I've worked too hard. Yeah. I've come this far for all of this to go because of a pissing virus yeah so yeah that was uh that's the story of covid mental wow. i don't even know how to put it into words all that really mate because it's, it's there's a lot to cover there but it's in, it's incredibly impressive and it, it's very difficult isn't it to verbalize how, how, the, how that means but I, I, but is it impressive because to me i i know it is objectively i'm not saying this to like get an ego shot it's not about that but but is it because actually part of me is like well what what other choice was there well yeah i guess so but i think the impressive bit is having someone a t- for me is having a team of people who believe in you yeah that's cool Th- that's that's the, cool that's what i mean about i kind of i am going to take it away from you a little bit and say like i'm in business too so i know what it's like to create something and just push it forward yeah, 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 and, yeah. and yeah. I, I think that's what you're trying to allude to yeah but having a team of people who believe in you, mate, that's fucking impressive. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. And then pushing forward and it's creating awesome. something and getting to where it is now. And I've seen Fanscape, but it's an impressive bit of kit. Thank you. Yeah. 
And is. now I think it's going to change that because I, me and you have had this. I think we had this discussion where it can't help me. Yeah, yeah, yes. But it can help. There's so many franchise mm-hmm. networks out there that it's going to really help their business. Yeah. And yeah. I'm just changing my CRM and recruitment as well. Funnily enough, but it's it does massively change your business. Yes, yeah, it really does. It's time, isn't it? It's yeah. always that bit of if you can save time. Yeah. It's that's the key is blocking out. You can save time in any business is the best bit of anything, isn't it? So. Yeah, it's been the most amazing journey, and uh, yeah, I just love it. I mean. Wouldn't change it for the world. You've done quite a lot, haven't you, mate, for your age? I don't know. I, I guess. Yeah, I guess. But, I, you know. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, you're quite so well, you're quite, you've got a nice, I, I like you, mate. Like you've got, you've got <laughs> a you. nice decorum about you. Like Thank a, you. I feel like you give me trust and like I like that about oh, you. I appreciate that. That's really kind. I, yeah. I, I try. And, and again, I, I desperately. I feel like you've got integrity. Thank you. Yeah, I think so. And, and part of, the stuff I can't talk about, there, there was a question mark over that. So yeah. so I've worked really, well, I don't think I've worked hard because I felt it was always there. But I think when that gets questioned um, yeah. to an extremely extreme level, um, yeah, that's difficult because yeah. I think for all the glitz and glam or whatever may or may not come with business in the day, if you, your reputation is kind of, Everything. to most people... It's pretty integral. Integrity and reputation, word of mouth. Trust. Is fucking everything. Everything. Yeah. Bye. So people might not like me, you know, people might watch this or meet me and not like me. And ultimately the truth is I don't, I don't care, but I would like people to at least... I don't um, think anyone would not like you, mate. <laughs> lots of people don't like me, I can assure you. <laughs> but I'd like... For, for me, it's about respect. As long as people are like, yeah, do you know what? Fair enough. He's doing his thing. Might not be my thing, whatever. Yeah. That's all anyone can ask for. Yeah. And that, that, I think that's what we've got to strive to do as entrepreneurs, right? It's, cre- yeah. it's create a cultural environment where that, yeah. that happens. So, so someone asked me once what ICC success has. And again, I can talk about the money situation, but if we just put that to one side, and I think you've just exactly described what I did, and I think Kay's heard me say this before, is creating a really nice environment for people to live yeah. in during the day and be part of something full of yeah. purpose and drive and success and feel part of something. Yeah. And I think you pretty much described it before when you talked about the same culture as I yeah. want. It's, it's, it's everything that, isn't it, mate? Well, purpose is an amazing word. And actually, if we just move the conversation that for a moment, because I think this probably will stitch everything together and might hopefully kind of almost complete the loop. So I've got two kind of driving aims. The first is quite kind of amorphous, so the other one is a bit more specific. So I just want to leave the world in a better place than I found it. Yeah. That's it. Where that goes, I don't care. And I appreciate I'm a walking hypocrite. So, you know, I'm passionate about the environment. I drive cars around in circles for fun. I do recognise these things don't necessarily align. But, you know, I think it's as a broad yeah. approach, accepting we're flawed humans, full of contradictions. That, that's my thing. And where I've landed on recently is having observed friends and, and just generally, I, I really genuinely worry for the next generation. I know, you know, you mentioned your father. I'm sure lots of people, you know, um, listening to this have got children. And the thing that has always struck me is what has made me who I am today is outside the classroom. Yeah. Sport, the arts, mixing with people from different backgrounds, you know, getting outside the comfort zone, learning to fail safely. I think these lessons are not in the classroom. I think they're outside the classroom. Yeah, yeah. Young people today are losing the opportunity to do this because it's coming out of the school system. It's not being funded. And here's my mission is to try and do what I can to fix that. Yeah. So essentially what we're, what, everything I'm trying to do in the portfolio of things we're trying to do, apart from the dog one, because um, it doesn't really link, um, is, is trying to help the next generation fundamentally. And the way I think we do that is there are three pillars that, that need to happen to make that work. One is we need amazing people delivering amazing, amazing services. I would say Swim Time does that. People might disagree. That's fine. You had Denise from Rasmus Towers recently. I'm sure she delivers, delivers amazing performing yeah, arts. Yeah, yeah. And there are heaps of fantastic brands out there doing amazing things. Yeah, yeah. So that's number one. Yeah. Number two, I think you need really, really great systems and tech so you're operating efficiently because we need great, you know, we might be doing this for philanthropic reasons, but let's be honest, efficient businesses enable you to teach more kids 100 percent yeah so that's number two yeah, yeah. and number three standards yeah. so for me that is around having really really good standards around safeguarding children around health around well-being yeah. all that kind of stuff get those three things together we've smashed it yeah, yeah so yeah. in terms of what i do as a business so we've got companies that deliver stuff to kids and we're always looking at acquiring more in there franscape i believe does the software yeah and i mentioned earlier about an organization called icap which yeah. is the institute of children's activity providers that's an association we run effectively as a not-for-profit right. which is helping to be that standard barrier so basically i'm running those i'm involved in those three things yeah. so i can influence and try and drive those three things together 
to ultimately drive towards that common oh, purpose. Right. And that, that is essentially how it all stitches together. Yeah. That's it. Absolutely blown away by uh, for your. Uh, there's some stuff we've not even we've not even tapped on. It's still hard to sort of for me to put into words about how, what you've done, but it's very impressive, mate. Thank you. Um, I kind of don't want to wrap it up because I, I wanted to talk a little bit about just to pronounce it again. ICAP is it? ICAP. What's that, mate? So um, it's like the BFA in franchising. It's that version for the kids' activity space. Man. So we're a membership organisation yeah. for uh, for businesses that are involved in that space. Right. So Rasmataz are a member, for example. Right. Yeah. So um, we we come together as a, as a collective, and you know, for example, we have a conference where, and I, I've been really privileged to do this, is, is I can use my network to bring in perhaps speakers that maybe we wouldn't be able to have access to before yeah. so bring people in who can inspire share help educate the group um, for example one of the things that we've done recently um, to help the members um, is around safeguarding so for example we're the first organization that provides a free and i mean free for every member safeguarding course for children oh amazing so rather than it's an imp it's an it's an essential part of yeah. our industry yeah same um, with me my industry as well so yeah so I think your industry is probably more regulated than ours. Yeah, the yeah. kids sector actually isn't that regulated. Um, yeah. People think it is, but it actually isn't. So what I'm trying to do is say, okay, let, let's let's sit around the table and say, can we all agree that safeguarding is really important? Can we all agree that everybody that works in there should have a basic understanding of how yeah. that should work? Yeah. I've got a, a medium, a mechanism to deliver something for free through the membership. I mean, you need to pay to be a member, but yeah. there's no additional charge. Yeah. Um, do it. Yeah, yeah. Why don't we do it? Yeah, yeah. So there's all stuff around that. And then the thing, probably bizarrely, I'm most proud of, just because I can't believe I pulled it off. And actually, it's really going to make a difference. It, it sounds boring, but it's actually quite cool, is insurance. So all through COVID, a lot of companies were in the kids space were complaining about the incumbent insurance provider, really crap service, really expensive premiums. And I had an idea, because we represent a lot of businesses, and I went to uh, a Lloyds of London syndicate through some contacts of mine, and basically was like, look, I represent thousands of businesses. Why don't we have a common policy for kids' brands? So if you do a suite of sports, I mean, martial arts, rugby, football, performing arts, blah, 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 whatever, okay, and we know they're in a certain revenue band, I can help um, create a framework where you as the insurer know that they're running to a certain standard. So we, for example, can say, well, look, we'll make sure we've got a data protection policy. We can make sure, you know, all yeah. this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't we do a deal? So they've come in with a price that is about... On average, it does vary depending on your quote, but at least half the price of the current provider. Well done, mate. So you become a member, if you become a member of ICAP, you get insurance for free. Public liability um, and all that stuff thrown in. I, it's just, that for me is one of the most game-changing things I've yeah. ever been able to deliver. Super proud of it. Well done, mate. Smashed it. I've never done anything like that. I love that. Why not? Yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, we, we do have one insurance provider. We work with them and then all the, fan, all the franchisees buy from them because we well, we're that particular one. But mm. yeah, we don't, we haven't created. But then again, I'm not involved heavy, heavily in the recruitment industry as, as, as you are in the swim industry. I'm going to wrap it up, mate. I think we've covered a lot. We have covered a lot. Um, I don't don't particularly want to talk about franchising anymore. And I think, I think... You, That's good. I, I think, I think, I think I absolutely love everything you're about I love Rachel I love Swim Time as a brand I think it's a fantastic business model Thanks, and right. I like Fanscape as well so interesting but now I'm glad we got to know each other a bit better yeah I really I genuinely genuinely really enjoyed this and I, I think, think it was good that we didn't chat before yeah yeah I, I just had this feeling my yeah. gut feeling yeah this is, I didn't expect this to be as kind of interesting and almost it's been Strangely, quite quite emotional. It's emotional, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 it's been yeah. quite emotional. Of course, it's been emotional, mate. Yeah. But I've just peeled back <laughs> years of your life and yeah, maybe describe cool. it to me because it's emotional. It's yeah, enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, 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 no, thanks. That's it. Thanks for having me, mate. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Appreciate it. Awesome.